My name is Oscar Lloyd. My name is Kyle McGrath. And I'm Andrew Maestro. And this is Clash Course U.S. History. And today we are going to talk about, wait for it, the Mongols. Gosh, darn it, Oscar. First of all, one, this is U.S. history, not world history. I'm sorry, you just said that. So, what are you? Oh my gosh. And two, we'll save that for another video, okay? And three, we're going to talk about things that led up to the Revolutionary War of America. Now, many people think that the Revolutionary War was about taxes that upset the colonists. So, like, Mr. Lloyd, it was about stamps and tea, right? No, annoying me from the past. It wasn't about tea, and definitely not about stamps. What was it all about, then? It is a little confusing, but that's why Clash Course History is here to answer all your questions. French and Indian War, colonists believed that they had won the right to settle west of the Appalachian Mountains. Out of fear of starting another war, British Parliament passed the Proclamation of 1763 which didn't allow colonists to settle west of the Appalachian Mountains. Many colonists were outraged because many of them had hopes of taking the Native Americans' land and because land was hard to come by. The French and Indian War also left Britain with a lot of war debt. Since the colonists did most of the fighting, British Parliament believed that it was only right to tax the colonists to pay for the war debts. The time to save money was the Quartering Act. This forced the colonists to provide shelter and supplies to the British soldiers. Trying to make a living was hard enough, but it was even more difficult trying to provide for soldiers. The first actual tax came with the Sugar Act. The Sugar Act placed a tax on sugar, molasses, and other products shipped to the colonies. This tax didn't affect all colonists, and mostly affected merchants who worked with smuggled goods. At the time, colonists had grown to governing themselves, so to be taxed without representation was considered tyranny. The Sugar Act was a burden for the colonists, however, it wasn't as annoying as the Stamp Act. Oh boy. The Stamp Act required the colonists to buy a legal stamp, which is used for all legal documents. I mean, who buys a stamp just to mail a letter? There's so many uses. The tax mostly affected those who used lots of paper, such as newspaper companies and lawyers. Protesters organized the Stamp Act Congress, where colonists decided to boycott British goods. This is the first time we can see the colonists working together. You know, like that, oh, what's it called? A government. Under all the constant boycotts and protests, Britain finally repealed the Stamp Act after they saw it was a mistake. It was around this time that Parliament passed the Declaratory Act. The Declaratory Act basically told the colonists, hey, we're the guys in charge here, and we can tax you, just not now. But we can, remember that, we can, just maybe later, I guess, yeah. Then soon, Parliament used the Declaratory Act and passed the Townshend Acts. There were several taxes that, pa that were passed to raise revenue in the colonies. These acts basically placed duties, or import taxes, on various goods brought to the colonies. This included glass, paper, paint, lead, and tea. These also helped to stop smuggling, which the Amer Americans did not like at all. These acts were enforced by the British officers who used writs of assistance to enter homes and search for smuggled goods. In response to the Townsend Act, many boycotts and protests were started. Local artisans lo lo wait, loved, sorry, loved the boycotts because they could earn more money. But, sadly, some of these protests got a little out of hand. March 5th, 1770, one protest ignited the flames of revolution. On this night, a crowd of people were held at gunpoint. Then, one of the redcoats fired his musket at one of the protesters, killing him. The British then started firing at the crowd, killing four more colonists. Paul Revere takes advantage of this moment and engraves on silver, showing the most powerful army at the time, firing on an unarmed crowd. At the time, we called it the Bloody Massacre, but now, we call it the Boston Massacre. Thanks to Thomas Jefferson and his delivery system, by the time Britain heard about the massacre, most of the colonies already knew about it. After several protests and boycotts, most of the taxes were repelled, which left only one tax. The tax on tea. In 1773, Parliament passed the Tea Act, which gave the Britain East India Company control over the American tea trade. Tea was very popular in the colonies, but most of it was smuggled from Holland. And as Americans, and as Americans, we love our God-given right to smuggle goods. It wasn't the smugglers that caused colonists to dump tea into the Boston Harbor. 
It was the fact that if Parliament could tax something as important as tea, then it means that they could tax whatever they want. This caused colonists to wonder what Parliament would do next. Several protests took place, but the most noble one was the one that took place on the night of December 16, 1773. This protest was known as the Boston Tea Party. Members of the Sons of Liberty dressed as Native Americans to board one of the cargo ships that held the tea. 342 chests of tea were destroyed, the equivalent of $4 million. Parliament did not respond kindly to the protest. Instead, they approved several acts which the colonists referred to as the Intolerable Acts. One act closed the port of Boston until the colonists paid for the destroyed tea. Others banned the committees of correspondence and forced the quartering act and allowed British officials to stand trial in Britain. It was around this time that the colonists were practically looking for anything to use as an excuse to arouse the colonies. It was the Intolerable Acts that pushed the colonists over the limit. The committees of correspondence called for a meeting to discuss how to resist the Intolerable Acts. 1774, delegates of 12 of the 13 colonies Oh, Georgia! met to discuss how to resist the Intolerable Acts. The delegates agreed to disobey the Intolerable Acts, stop paying taxes, and prepare for war. On the night of April 18th, 1775, General Gage had ordered his troops to arrest Sam Adams and John Hancock and to destroy the supplies in Concord. However, Britain underestimated the spiel of Paul Revere's mail delivery system, and news of the British spread like wildfire. As the British troops marched into Lexington, they were stopped by 70 militiamen. At first, they were a stalemate waiting for someone to take the first shot. It is unknown who shot the first shot, but it became known as the shot heard around the world. After they finished off Lexington, the British marched to Concord, where they met with more militiamen. Under fire, the British were forced to retreat. This was the start of the Revolutionary War. The start of family and friends turning on each other to support either the Patriots or the Loyalists. This was the beginning of freedom. This was the beginning of America. Thanks for watching. This has been Clash Course History. Class Course History is written, produced, filmed, and acted by Kyle McGrath, Oscar Lloyd, and Andrew Maestro.